So you're considering making a move and wondering where is the best place to live in Tampa Bay. In today's video, I'll share the seven best cities and suburbs along with the type of lifestyle each one of the areas is known for. We're gonna talk about the location, dining and entertainment, shopping, real estate, and the quality of life in each area. Now, the reason that I'm making this video is because of you. Over the past two years, we've had hundreds of people reach out to my team here at the True Living Group about moving to Tampa. And the interesting thing is, a majority of them don't end up moving to the city of Tampa. Most move to the seven areas we're going to cover today. And if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala, and five years ago, I packed up my family. We moved 1,200 miles south from Metro Detroit to the sun and sand of Tampa Bay and have been loving it ever since. We make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and the team leader here with the True Living Group, and we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. All right, so the way this list is built is in no particular order, meaning it's not ranked. Uh, number one is not the, the best and uh, number seven is not the worst. This is gonna be completely subjective based upon your ideal lifestyle. And that's the biggest thing I wanna help communicate through this list here. The cool thing about Greater Tampa Bay area is that there are so many different lifestyle opportunities here in the area. It's what drew us to the area. You may not be a beach baby like myself, you might want an urban feel. You got that in Tampa, which is awesome. If you wanna be by the bay and have an urban and suburban living, we can do that too. And we're gonna get into that into this list today. In the interest of transparency, just so you know, my city is not in here. I wanted to try to be impartial. Um, of course, I love where I live, but I, I discluded that on purpose. And, and really, it was easy to do because this is where people move. When they contact us about relocating to the area, these are the places they move to. So let's get into this list. And the first one on our list is St. Petersburg. Now, if you've never been to St. Petersburg, Florida, let me tell you, it is an absolute gem. As a matter of fact, it is a vibe unto itself. I love taking my wife there for date night. We take the family down there. They got a great farmer's market on the weekends. There's so many things to do. You've got the Tampa Bay Rays who play at Tropicana Field. You've got the Rowdies who play soccer. You've got the Dolly Museum. You've got the St. Pete Pier, the Marina. Uh, Central Avenue and all the, the shops and restaurants and boutiques and nightclubs. There is entertainment galore when it comes to St. Petersburg, Florida. The community, I love the ability to be able to live a few blocks north of downtown and to walk or bike and come to uh, downtown, catch a great meal, grab you know maybe on a rooftop bar or a rooftop dining area, walk the pier, just really enjoy everything that Tampa Bay has to offer. And St. Petersburg is one of those spots. It's a pretty large city overall, not a small city. It's at the south end of Pinellas County. It takes roughly 20 to 25 minutes minutes on a good day to get to downtown Tampa. During crazy traffic times, it can be as much as 45 minutes, so keep that in perspective. You can get over to St. Pete Beach, and they are different, just so you have perspective. St. Pete Beach uh, from downtown St. Pete in about 15 to 25 minutes, depending on traffic again. Um, but of course, you have access to the bay, which is beautiful, so it's something to keep in, in perspective. Great communities and neighborhoods that surround the area. You've got the historic Northeast, which is one of the most popular areas. Uh, Snell Island, which is also great if you're a boater, you want to have a boat slip. A lot of those homes have the ability to put a dock in their backyard and have access to the bay. Um, you've got uh, neighborhoods like uh, Historic Kenwood and Kenwood. These are great areas down in the, the Grand Central District. And there's entertainment literally for a mile, a mile and a half down Central Avenue. There are breweries. Um, it's just so much to do. And uh, I have spent the last five years, you know, running around the greater Tampa Bay area, documenting all these spots. And I gotta be honest with you, the culture, the diversity in, in St. Petersburg is like no other in the area. So keep that in perspective. If you're into a, a more urban slash suburban type of living, then this you should put this on your map. There's a lot of culture, a lot of art. We've got murals all over the wall. It's definitely worth checking out. Now, over the last 30 days from the time of this recording, 
Single family homes have sold for as low as $155,000. Now that could have been a, a total gut job renovation, you know, that at the low end. We do not see homes at that price on average. And the high over that 30 day time period was 7.5 million. So keep that in perspective. Now the average home is a three bedroom, two bath, right around 1,550 square feet, and that comes in right around 573,000. If you look at the median sales price, it's roughly $125,000 lower. But I always like to speak in averages because that's what you're gonna deal with for the most part. Can you find a 900 square foot bungalow that needs a ton of renovation, you know, down in that 200 mark. You could if you call people and find a deal offline somewhere, but that is the unicorn that you're out there hunting for and you're gonna spend 150 to 200 grand renovating the thing. So I always like to deal in averages. What's happening right now? Just to give you a little bit of perspective as we move along this list. Now condos and townhomes have sold for as low as 85,000 as much as 3.35 million. So keep that in perspective as well. And on average, those are two bedroom, three bath, just over 1,600 square foot, and those are averaging a million dollar per sale as well. Another one of the best places to live in the greater Tampa Bay area is none other than Clearwater. And Clearwater has a brand all to itself, and there is a lot of uniqueness about this area too. I mean, over 100,000 residents, of course there's Clearwater Beach. Um, you've got the city of Clearwater, you've got Clearwater Beach, white sugary sand. It's known for just having the beautiful crystal blue waters, and it is a beautiful area, y'all. It is definitely something that attracts so many people to the area. You know, it has over four million visitors every single year. I think there was four and a half million last year. You know. They're building beautiful hotels and, and condominiums down on the, on the beach. But you also, if you come over to the intercoastal waterway there onto the mainland on the peninsula in the Pinellas County, you do have access to normal housing, right? A four bedroom, you know, two bath or three bedroom, two bath or, you know, a normal house per se, not just being on the beach because the beach isn't for everyone, but it tends to bring a lot of people to the area. So keep that in perspective. You know, we've got the malls there, um, you know, great shops. Shopping. A lot of our car dealers are in Clearwater, you know, one of the more well-established cities that we have in the entire area. And it draws so many people to the greater Tampa Bay area each year and they get to visit and check it out. And then that's usually what starts drawing people to the area. You know, they come down, they spend time at St. Pete Beach or they spend time in Clearwater and they get the book, right? And they're like, man, I really want to make this home a reality for us. And, you know, it's definitely worth taking a look at from the Tampa airport to uh, Clearwater on a great day takes about 35 minutes. Um, it can take as much as 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Clearwater is not for me. And when I say this, and, and I'm just trying to be real with y'all, the, the busyness of Clearwater from, you know, the end of January to May is, it can be overwhelming. And um, as a resident, you gotta keep that in perspective. So I wanna share that with you because, you know, the white sugar sand beaches are glorious, but if you don't live on the beach, if, you, if you're going to live in the city proper, you know, just over the intercoastal waterway there, it may not be for you because of this giant swell we have in the winter. So just keep that in perspective. People overlook that, they come, lots of people love it. Like I said, over 100,000 residents, that is something to be said, but it does have those challenges. If you can overcome them and you know, hey, I wanna be there, I, I love Clearwater Beach, it offers so much. I mean, you got the park down there, they're doing concerts, they're really doing a revitalization of the downtown, which is really cool as well. It's something to, you know, definitely worth taking a look at. And again, this is about lifestyle. It's not about what we think, it's about what you think. But I do think is that it is important to understand some of the challenges that come along with living in these beautiful communities. When it comes to real estate, over the last 30 days, we've had single family home sales as low as $150,000. That's gonna be a total gut job. And, and as high as 5 million. So keep that in perspective. The average home is a three bedroom, two bath, 1,900 square foot, and is sold at 628,000 over the last 30 days. Again, you can find them much cheaper than that, and you can find them much more expensive. You know, if you're gonna be looking at that two bedroom, two bath, or three bedroom, two bath, you know, you're gonna be starting in the low four, so keep that in mind. You can find them cheaper, but they won't necessarily be the best neighborhoods. Um, you, you know, just be mindful of that, and they're definitely gonna need some work. Again, people are spending on average over 600,000. That's gonna get you a quality house in the area, so keep that in perspective too. Now, condos have sold from as low as 66,000 all the way up to 2.3 million. 
They're typically a three bedroom, two bath, just shy of 2,100 square feet and have been selling right around $722,000. So the next town on our list is one of my personal favorites, Dunedin. And this one can be a little bit hard to pronounce. I, I, you know, I know when I saw it for the first time, I wasn't quite sure what it said. I've heard it called Dunedin, a lot of different things. And just know that you're not alone. I made those mistakes too, but it's called Dunedin, just so you have perspective. This is a great coastal town, y'all. Um, it is very unique in a lot of different ways. It lives pretty much like a village. To walk around downtown on a Friday, Saturday night, it's unbelievable. The park, the Main Street dead ends right at the marina and you can get some great seafood there, go watch a sunset, but there's also a park with a tot lot so you can take the kids down there. They do a, a, a beer and barbecue festival there every single year, I love it. And this town is really, really cool. You can walk all of Main Street and see lots of good shopping. You've got great restaurants. One of my favorite restaurants in all of Tampa Bay is there, it's called Casatina. They make some incredible, incredible Latin food that you will not be disappointed by. Make sure you stop in there. Um, and it, it also has the Pinellas Trail, which is uh, over a 40 mile uh, path that you can ride a bike and walk on. That goes from the tip of Pinellas County all the way down into St. Pete. Um, you can do, the Blue Jays have spring training there, which is really cool also. And it's just got all the vibes, man. It is a, it's a coastal town that kind of gives you a hug as you arrive. I just, I love it. And it's been voted one of the best places in America to retire to. Actually last year, I think it was the number one place in America to retire to. And let me just say this, whenever people hear that, they're like, oh, of course it's Florida, it's full of old people. And first of all, they're wise, just so everybody's on the same page. And when I go down there, I'm not completely surrounded by people that are just wiser than me. All right, y'all, there are, children down there. There are young kids running around town. There are young working professionals in Dunedin. It has something for everybody. It's extremely diverse. Um, it does get uh, popular in the winter with snowbirds is what we call them, but people who come down for, for obviously the sun and the salty air. Um, and the Toronto Blue Jays pay there, so, play there. So they bring a lot of Canadians. There are second homes there. It has beautiful Gulf Coast real estate that you are absolutely going to love. You can go up to Honeymoon Island. You can go over to Caladesi Island. You can camp out there. It's so cool. The causeway that goes out to Honeymoon Island is about two and a half miles out one way and two and a half miles back. We moved a client in um, on Dolphin Point, which is right there on the causeway, and she absolutely loves it. She comes down for the winter and then she walks the causeway. She goes all the way out to Honeymoon Island and comes back and she just loves it. You can take your boats and kayaks um, and uh, jet skis out of the, the, uh, the causeway there as well. Dunning is just one of those really cool vibey towns. I would definitely check it out, y'all. And over the last 30 days, if you were looking to pick up a single family home, you could get one for as low as $231,000 and as much as $2.3 million. Now the average home was a three bed, two bath, 2,100 square foot home, and that'll set you back about $722,000. But if you were looking to pick up a condo or townhome over the last 30 days, you could get one for as low as $97,000 all the way up to $749,000. Now those on average are two bedroom, two bath, 1,400 square foot, and it'll set you back about $429,000. If you're getting any value out of today's video, I'd love it if you hit that like button. If you want more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. That way you can be notified every time we make a new video just like this. All right, and now we're gonna move from Pinellas County and we're gonna make our way back over to Hillsborough County and we're gonna go into Tampa proper. Now, I know I said at the beginning of this video that most people, a majority of them do not end up moving to Tampa, but the ones that do tend to pick the next two cities we're gonna talk about, the next two suburbs specifically. And the first one on that list is none other than Hyde Park. And this is located in South Tampa. This is one of the most desirable zip codes in all of Tampa Bay. So keep that in mind. It is actually one of the coolest locations, man. I, It is the perfect mix of urban, suburban, and bay living, in my humble opinion, that you could possibly get. I mean, what is cooler than being able to go down to Hyde Park Village, going over to Buddy Brew and grabbing a great coffee, taking your significant other to the meat market and having one of the most incredible dining experiences you'll ever have, wandering around Hyde Park Village, all the great shops and boutiques that they have there. Um, there is a Warby Parker, there is uh, a Nike store there. I mean, everything, everything. And I'm, I'm leaving everything, Crate and Barrel, like they got 
got it all down there, y'all. They've even got a West Elm Furniture Store, and if you've never been to one of those before, I strongly encourage you to go. Definitely wanna go check that out. But what makes this so unique is the access to downtown Tampa. Like I said, it's really, it's the perfect mix of suburban, urban, and bay. It is less than 10 minutes to downtown Tampa. You can be over to Amelie Arena where the lightning play and, um, and concert the venues are in like eight minutes. It's unbelievable. And you have access to Bayshore Boulevard. Just a couple blocks away from Hyde Park Village is the longest continuous stretch of sidewalk allegedly in the world. It's four and a half miles. People run up and down this thing every day. They walk, they take their family, they take their dogs. You can see the dolphins bouncing around in the bay. It's unbelievable. And the real estate here is gorgeous. You've got these beautiful old bungalow style homes and then also a great mix of modern design as well where they weren't able to save some of these homes which i think is absolutely incredible and speaking of the real estate over the last 30 days single family homes have sold for as low as three hundred and twenty thousand dollars and as much as 10.8 million dollars this is some exclusive real estate to say the least it's a beautiful area the average home there is a 3300 square foot and is sold for 2.3 million dollars so it definitely is not inexpensive now condos and townhomes those are ranging from right around 205,000 all the way up to 825,000. And that'll get you a two bedroom, three bath, 1300 square foot for right around $535,000. So that moves us to the fifth suburb and another one here in Tampa and Hillsborough County. It's on the northwest side. And as a matter of fact, this suburb has been voted the number one suburb in the state of Florida. You know, this should be on your radar and it's none other than West Chase. And if you haven't heard of this, you need to. I've done several videos on this area because it is one of those absolute delightful spaces that you may wanna consider calling home. Whether you're a working professional, a young working professional, whether you're retired or you're, you know, you're, you're growing your family, this is one of those places that people love to call home and for a lot of reasons. The location is incredible. It's on the northwest side of Tampa, um, close to, to the bay and the beaches, which makes it a really, really nice location. It's also close to the Tampa International Airport. It's close to uh, Raymond James Stadium and not far away from downtown, 25 to 30 minutes depending on traffic, which makes this a very, very attractive area. It's extremely diverse. It has top rated schools and in the greater Tampa Bay area and the state of Florida, that's not always easy to achieve. So something that is definitely on people's radars. Now, another thing that brings people to West Chase is the jobs. You know, surrounding West Chase, you have a lot of defense contractors. You've got the University of South Florida. And again, you're close to downtown, so you have access to both the tech jobs and the financial jobs that are um, going on there. And it, the hospital systems in the area. And these are where we see a lot of the residents they are employed at. So it's driving a lot of that, um, you know, wanna be in the area. And what I love about West Chase is it's one of those uh, better established neighborhoods. Um, the properties were built in the 90s and uh, 2000s, uh, so you've kind of shaken off, you know, that that new status. But it's really well defined. Great parks, a lot of community amenities in general. You've got tennis courts and pools. Um, as like I said, great parks. It's close to things like Costco, um, Target, all the shopping you could ever ask for. It's just a really, really nice community and something worth checking out. Now, single family homes have currently sold for as low as $320,000 on the low end and as much as $1.2 million on the high end. They are typically a four bedroom, three full bath, 2,400 square foot, and they sell right around in that $600,000 range. When I pulled the numbers over the last 30 days, it said 496, but to be honest with you, that's an anomaly, so keep that in perspective. When you're looking at home prices and listed prices, especially in Wesley Chapel, you're gonna see from that you know, mid sixes to $1 million on average average, but the numbers are the numbers. So I wanted to share that with you guys just to give you perspective. And if you're thinking that a condo or a townhome is a better fit for you, those have sold for as little as 150,000 all the way up to 575,000. Those are typically a two bedroom, two bath, 1,450 square feet and come in right around $382,000. Now we're gonna jump in the car and take a 35 minute drive north of downtown Tampa to Wesley Chapel. This city has absolutely exploded in popularity and for great reason. The entire community had the, if we build it, they will come mindset and they didn't get it wrong here. 
between the shopping, between the amenities, between all of the things that you have access to as a resident, this place has really started to grow, especially over the last five years. Um, now, I wanna talk about some of those amenities. You've got three incredible shopping centers. You've got the premium outlets in Tampa. Um, those are an incredible draw. You've got the Grove, um, on the northwest corner of Wesley Chapel there, and then you've also got the shops at Wiregrass, which is another incredible outdoor mall. These are three things that if any community had those, they would be happy to have that type of access. You've got Costco and Publix and, and Target and all the things, home goods, everything you could ever ask for in these communities here. But on top of that, Wesley Chapel's done an excellent job of picking home developers that really wanted to invest in the community. And they were the very first community in the greater Tampa Bay area to put a man-made lagoon in the area. And if you have not seen these things, I strongly encourage you to check it out. Wesley Chapel has a seven and a half acre lagoon called Epperson. It is an incredible community. Now, if you're not a resident of the community, you still have access. They sell public tickets to the lagoon itself and you can go out there and you can kayak and paddleboard and they've got their own beach. There's slides and obstacle courses, so many things. And on top of that, they've got the sports complex over there. Um, again, new construction is popping up everywhere. It's just one of those places that people really wanna be and for good reason, I mean, the, the developers they've chosen have done an excellent job. You've got something for everyone. You know, you've got properties that, that range from the starter home, so to speak, all the way up to, you know, the most fickle client who expects high-end luxury. You have access to that in Wesley Chapel as well. So definitely something we're taking a look at. The schools are rated well. Um, they've uh, actually got STEM schools up there too. So something to consider for you if you're looking for a little bit more um, private investment in education, that's an opportunity. Just draw a lot of working professionals to the area as well. It's extremely diverse. If you're thinking about the greater Tampa Bay area and the beaches aren't for you, you know, the the Epperson's motto is we're bringing the beach to the backyard. And that's not the only thing that Wesley Chapel's known for, but it is definitely one of the amenities that you have access to. Incredible parks. You definitely want to check those out. And speaking of real estate, over the last 30 days, you could have picked up a single family home for as low as $320,000 and for as much as 1.2. The average home is a four bedroom, three bath, 2,500 square foot, and they're averaging right around $496,000. If you're looking to pick up a condo or townhouse, those have ranged from $302,000 all the way up to $475,000. And that'll get you a three bedroom, three bath, 1,750 square feet, coming in at an average of $340,000. And now we're gonna head south, just south of the bay into Manatee and Sarasota counties into Lakewood Ranch. And Lakewood Ranch has been named the number one master plan community for five consecutive years. Now, what does that mean, Juan? Well, a master plan community is a development, a real estate development that has been designed from tip to tail. And let me just tell you right now, it feels like it. When you go to Lakewood Ranch, you are gonna have a curated experience in terms of living. It is a very unique lifestyle and a good way. You wouldn't be the number one if you weren't doing it right. And Lakewood Ranch does an excellent job. Now, the thing about Lakewood Ranch, similar to uh, uh, Wesley Chapel, which I didn't discuss there, Wesley Chapel is an hour away from the beach, y'all. You gotta keep that in perspective. Now. Lakewood Ranch isn't as far, but you're still gonna be driving 45 to 55 minutes to get to any beach worth note. So keep that in mind, okay? As much as an hour if you're gonna go to St. Pete Beach. And I know that that may not be your draw, but I wanna give you some perspective in terms of time and distance. Um, it's gonna take you roughly an hour to get to Tampa International Airport, but you can be to Sarasota in less than 20 minutes. So, you know, gives you some access. If you're looking to drive to downtown Tampa, it's gonna take you anywhere between 50 minutes and an hour and 10, depending on traffic. But the thing about Lakewood Ranch, that is amazing is you really don't have to go just about anywhere else. They have their own hospital system. The development is unbelievable. No matter what real estate community you choose to live in, what neighborhood or suburb you choose to live in inside of Lakewood Ranch, you're going to be impressed. One of my favorite is Waterside Place. I love it, okay? They've got restaurants and bars and, and their own, like it's on a peninsula. You can take a water taxi across Kingfisher Lake if you live at Lake House Cove. I mean, it's just a beautiful community. It's definitely worth checking out. The, the schools are highly rated, so something worth uh, taking a look at as well. And the community gives you really good access to I-75. You're right by uh, University Town Center Mall. Great area over there. You've got access from everything from Pop Stroke, the parks. I mean, there's 
there's just so much to do when it comes to Lakewood Ranch. And I could, I literally have done multiple videos on that. So I would encourage you guys to check that out if you're interested in that area, because the type of living that you should expect in Lakewood Ranch is what I would consider um, upscale casual. That's the way I would, I would call that. Um, I wouldn't consider it pretentious in any way, shape or form. I'm sure you can find some snobs, just you can find that anywhere. But I don't get that vibe. I get a, you know, a community that wants to grow, that wants to be healthy, that wants to win together. That's the sense I get when I'm in Lakewood Ranch. And to be honest with you, all of the communities we mentioned today have a very similar feel, which is why people are attracted to them. And don't take my word for it, y'all. This is why you're doing your homework. I always tell everybody, check things out. You got to go kick the tires, do your research. There's great websites like greatschools.org and you can check crime maps and you can do all of those things. But the number one thing I would encourage you to do is go community shopping. The best way to find out where you where you want to live and you're being called, called to is to go check these areas out and start checking the ones off that don't make sense for you. That is the the fastest way and, and a sure way to make sure you don't make mistakes. And if you're looking for help through that process, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. I'd be more than happy to jump on a Zoom call with you, walk you through the city through my eyes. We pull up the Google Calendar. We ask you questions like, what is your ideal lifestyle? Because here's what I know. If we really understand the, the type of lifestyle that you're trying to live when you relocate or you live in the area, then we can go to work finding the correct communities that match that ideal lifestyle. Then the houses tend to take care of themselves. It's really, that process works really well. It's when you go the other way is when you get yourself in trouble because if you don't know the area, how are you supposed to know? I went through this by myself. Part of the reason that I started this YouTube channel is because I didn't have videos like this when we made that jump five years ago. We had to do all the Googling, all the researching, and still throw a dart at the board, assuming we were correct. And then we came down and did some community shopping and that really helped us on that journey. It helped me eliminate the areas that I thought were like, okay, this could be it, but it just didn't feel right. And if I could give you any advice, it's that. Community shopping is the key when you're considering making these moves and relocating and you need a guide. And that's our role. We're here to be great guides. Um, if, if that interests you, don't hesitate to reach out. now. I'm gonna leave two videos right here that are gonna help you narrow down these communities. I would encourage you to check those out. Until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.